Amron. What's up? What's up, guys? What's up, buddy? Hey, it's uh, How we... East Coast time. Lord, where are you right now? I'm with the Degenerates in DeBerry, Florida, playing poker in a poker room. God, you're right. I just, are I you... just stepped away. Nice. Are you winning? Bro, these guys are so are you... terrible, you can't win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you play with strategy and people don't know what the hell they're doing. Right, they yeah, luck out on you. What... Exactly. So I'm, I'm in that world right now. And so I, gotta up, good, you... I got I got to say good game to them or nice hand because you want them to play these shit hands, but then you realize like you keep losing to these shit hands. So that's what it is. I'm getting text messages right now. People are watching this and they're saying, talk about the sack show. We're going to, we're going to get to the sack show for sure, because I've been getting phone calls about that as well. What's up. What's up with, were you at the tops conference? I was. Can you yeah, kind of give it, give us the, days. yeah, give us the vibe of that. Cool. I mean, um, there were definitely some haters. I'd probably say half the room is like old farts that don't want to move forward with the industry. And then the other ones that are embracing it. And I think what we have to do is figure out that these are the guys that are going to be calling the shots for the, for the foreseeable future. And either you get on board or you don't, and you're just going to get run over. So there was a guy, uh, sports card radio was there and he, that's you guys. I apologize. Um, sports card nonsense was there. Mm -hmm. Giuseppe. And he did a pod about this and there was a guy that stood up in the middle of the room and asked this question and he was like going off. I've been a, I've been a shop, hobby shop owner for four years now and I make $4 million in revenue a year. And you guys give all the stuff to the breakers and you never send stuff to me and I can't get product. I was thinking to myself, if there's any way to get your shit completely cut off, you're doing the blueprint, bro. You're standing in front of Michael Rubin and you're screaming about how you don't get yours. So I think they said something to him like, um, yeah, why don't we talk off stage? And I'm thinking to myself that you're about to get your account revoked. That's for damn sure. So, you know, it's what it is. You got a lot of people. I will tell you what was not there. Diversity, bro. <laughs> I was like one of nine brown people in that room. Um, no, no women probably too. There was like, there was like, uh, there was probably like 700, 800 people in the room. And there probably wow. had to be maybe 15 women total and cool. probably like, I don't know, 25 minorities. So it, it's just, uh, there's no hate on that. Don't, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the di lack of diversity was shocking. Absolutely shocking. Considering that in Sacramento, we have seven card shops and five of them are owned by minorities. So it's kind of, it's just a unique situation for me to go into, but everybody was really nice. I had a good time. And I will tell you that the vibe was strong. A lot of people were really happy with what Fanatics is doing. They're doing a good job. Um, it that, always, that release, the release of all the photos, they were telling us, don't don't take any pictures of the screens, don't do any of that stuff. This is top secret stuff. And literally within five seconds after, they uh, they told us not to, and then they ended that presentation of because they went by sport. They're posting something on by top. So they just wanted to scoop it first. I don't think they gave a shit that we actually took pictures. They just didn't want to leak it before they did it first officially. But the the response on the tops chrome and how they position this stuff, like Wemby turning to the side so it looks like a Spurs jersey, but it's not. Like they did a really, really good job. It, I I would say that it looks like a regular licensed card the way that they did it. And to have all these guys exclusive and they named off some of the football players too. Boy, Panini's product is going to be really, really barren when it comes to football for 24. They've got just about every prospect that really matters. Um, all the wow. quarterbacks, yeah, they have everybody. So expect that they're going to do a Topps Chrome version of this too. They released a couple new products, called one called Midnight, no, another one called Royalty. I mean, it, they have some really innovative uh, – Topps Cosmic, they're doing for both football and basketball now. They're doing – a something like that's like a uh what do you call it a uh, chronicles where they're mixing it with a bunch of different products in one mm -hmm. in football it's good man they're mm -hmm. doing a good job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you think you think fanatics is doing a good job because uh, uh, and you have to kind of play by their rules and play by their game as a shop owner are you are you totally fine with that as, as kind of playing by their rules and playing by their their system so that so that you're able to get product what I wish I would, what I wish they would do is co complete a MSRP, a retail price. I think that that's the only way to really kind of calm down how um, spending would go. Uh, I believe that there should be some sort of a cap as to what something would go up to. 
uh, as an example, like I'm a hobby shop. There's other hobby shops that are nearby us that have more allocation. They've been been around longer. They sell more wax maybe. And, but, you know, it's like, for example, Bowman. We got five cases of Bowman coming. That doesn't satisfy anything. I'll be out of that within one, one day. But you got breakers that get a, th- a hundred cases of Bowman. Breakers. So it's like, who are you really trying to serve? I, and I want Panini to do a great job. Excuse me, um, Fanatic to do a great job. And I think that they will. They're, they're listening to us. They legitimately are. But, you know, how are you supposed to help a hobby shop with walk-in traffic when you give a hundred cases to a breaker and give five cases to people that actually have to look people in the face and say, I'm out, <laughs> right? I have to go to the secondary market to go get more and pay more than what I could get directly from, from a distributor. So it's a, it's a weird situation. I think that they'll re- rectify it, but I will tell you one of the biggest things that they did was they straight up gave us the blueprint on how to get more. They were like, you need to post on social. You need to do this. You need to like, they laid out, you, you need to participate on rip nights. You need to participate on this. We want to be tagged. Like if somebody doesn't get allocation increases, it's because they didn't follow the step-by-step uh, game plan that they've given all of us. And we're all in the room. So if they say that they were ignorant to it, then either they're were, they were falling asleep. By the way, there was a guy that fell asleep so hard. I'm not lying. He was snoring so loud. He was about seven tables from the stage, so loud that the, the person on stage went, can you tell that guy that he's almost done with, that we're almost done with the soccer presentation? <laughs> snoring so loud. <laughs> uh, yeah. How not, how not to get your allocation increased? fall asleep so loud that you're snoring in the middle of a presentation from the stage. So what you're, what you're saying is allocation might be based on not so much how much you're able to sell, but how much you're able to promote essentially the brand either on social or following kind of the rules of, of, of fanatics. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? I'm not suggesting they literally said that word for word. They said, it's going to be a blend. It's going to be a blend of how active are you? How much are you purchasing? What are you purchasing? Um, how how you uh, tag on social? How active you are? How clean your store is? They showed this one cluttered ass store on the left, and then they showed a store similar to mine on the right. And they're like, "If this is what yours looks like on the left, don't expect us to increase allocation." And wow. not only that, but they're doing some stuff that's requiring some of these old farts to actually gun on board with technology, and um, it's pretty good. You need to pimp. What does it say? North Korea has nothing on fanatics. <laughs> hey, guys, my they, question they, is. They own it. They own it. My, my question is, so you say you get five cases of Bowman. How, That's how what much? I got. Sure. How much does Tops could could increase your allocation? Like, how much short is five cases? Like, could you do 50 cases? Could you do 100 cases? I, I think for a size mo- of my shop with a customer base that comes in, I think double that would be okay for me. You know, I would probably sell three to four cases on the first day or two or three, and then really kind of ride that out for the next month and a half. You know how it is guys. It's what's the newest product. Let's burn through that. But if you're guaranteeing one autograph per box, how many cases can you really, and three per hobby, excuse me, a jumbo. How many can you really make? There's a eventual stoppage of what, you can make as far as case count. Um, But five is just not enough for a shop that does the numbers that we do. Um, And there's shops that do more than us, right? And shops that do less than us. But what I'm getting at is that I think that if we ask for a certain amount based on that, I think that's what we should do. And I think that uh, they should satisfy that. But, uh, you know, a breaker with a hundred cases with a channel, I, you know, 20 X compared to a hobby shop that faces their customer as far as total count. That's just, in my opinion, it's just crazy. What, you know, what, per- what percentage of your sales are kind of new product fanatics? And then I guess single cards or supplies or other thing that's not related to fanatics. Do you know that kind of breakdown of how much, of, you know, your business is kind of tied to fanatics? Well, if you think about it all the, all the baseball that really sells is all tops and Bowman product period. End of story. You'll get the Panini selects and Don Russ and stuff like that. But I'd probably say it's 95 to 5% all tops and fanatics products that actually versus sell Panini. Right. Versus Panini. Um, you mean, uh, 
Panini has that elite extra edition that has like eight autographs in there for prospects and the whole thing's like 109 bucks. Like when somebody's looking for value, they'll grab that, but they want licensed stuff. They want to be able to, to know that it's a San Francisco giant Jersey on there and, and they have the, they have the stranglehold on that. So the far majority of that product is, is going to be there. I will tell you also the Bowman Chrome university football stuff is selling really well. And anything with Caitlin Clark and Wemby on the Bowman Chrome U does well too. So it's really product driven based on the autograph guys and, and gal in that case. So I, I just tell you that, um, that they're a significant player even without the licensing right now. Do you want to get into the Sacramento card show that, that was this past weekend? That's, I heard, that, I heard a lot a about it. That's a question you should it. ask Pete. You should ask Pete, does he want to get in? <laughs> the I, was, he wanted he wanted to get in he couldn't get in <laughs> and i heard this young man was wearing a shirt of your hobby shop and was promptly yeah. removed from the event or or it looks like he was 86th out of the event do you have any it looks like there's a, a kind of an intense rivalry um or animosity, I guess, on either one side. DP Sports Cards, I believe, was putting on the, the event, and he didn't let one of your employees in, if I have that correctly, and this gentleman was wearing a T-shirt of, of your shop and was escorted out. Uh, it, uh, am I, okay. Is that at all accurate, or, or uh, can, you, can you give I'll us give the story? You what, I'll give you what I know, because I wasn't there, and I was never going to go there. Um, let's step back for a second. I saw in the chat that somebody said something about Jeff Wilson's – Cards HQ. Guys, I went to it. I was there. I can give Ooh. you a little scoop on that place too. So I okay, went to we're it gonna yesterday ask after. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't a great experience. I can share with you that. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, so boy. I'll keep it juicy, right? Um, Thank as, you. Far as, the, as far as the card show is concerned, um, we never wanted to set up there. It was not something that we were going to do. One of my, my, one of my partners in the, in the shop and one of our great team members, Pete, uh, had a booth with another person that came from out of town, Matt, and the two of them had a booth together. Matt purchased the, the booth. I was not going to purchase the booth for the store. Um, it's just uh, just something I didn't want to do. I'll keep it like that. And so when Pete and Matt showed up, they were promptly meted at the door by the promoter and told that they weren't allowed in. They had paid in full, and they were just told that they were not allowed. Obviously, uh, they had the registration. I would think that the promoter has registration. I have registrations at my at my show. I know exactly who's keeping them, you know, coming in. So when Pete was turned around, he was like, well, we've paid in full. What's going on? I don't know if they had um, actually got refunded or not. I have no clue. Um, I didn't ask, nor do I care, because it wasn't our money as a company. So Pete was like, well, what am I going to do? He calls me, and I was like, I don't know. Do you have the stuff? Do you have the booth banner and everything he's like yeah i was like go grab a table post up outside if that's what you want to do so he did and uh his nickname is sidewalk pete <laughs> right but but you know pete's a really hard he's been working with me since he was 16 years old pete's 19 now he's and a great kid that's that's the legitimate hustle that that this hobby needs not these lazy asses that just only sell the repackers i'm talking about people that really put that grind and hustle in and pete's one of the one of the young goats, you know, and, and mm -hmm. so he set up out there, he did some purchasing, he sold a few cards. I mean, he wasn't there for long, but the point of it is, is like, we can't have people mistreated and then just go tuck our tails and go home. That wasn't going to happen. So that's what Pete did. He hung out, grabbed a Starbucks and people walked by. And, and I think that the real hobbyists, the people that really love what we do, collecting these men on cardboard, wearing, uh, wearing outfits, um, they see something like that and they see it. They see a promoter doing that to one of us. You know what I mean? And the whole group kind of rallied around that and said, this is wrong. Shouldn't have never happened. And that's, that was a really, uh, I was really cool to see people rally around a young man because no matter how tough Pete is and what his face looks like, as far as how stoic he might be, we're all 19, man. We're all 19. And we, and we all know how we felt at 19 when we felt attacked or if we felt bullied, and that's not cool. And, you know, we're older now and we can handle shit. You guys can handle darts thrown at you better than anybody I know. I'm trying, right? I'm, I'm trying not to look at the chat because I'm worried about them roasting me right now. <laughs> but they're like, they roast us, degenerate. Yeah. yeah, look at this degenerate in Florida over here at a poker room talking. 
but <laughs> but for real like at, at 19 i was insecure and it would mess me up so it's really important that we that we defend people that are doing the right thing and and, and rally around those people so i was a virgin at 19 says moon dust I, wrong with that. I, 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 I have I, a kid and i'm still a virgin and i'm married so <laughs> make that math work. i can i've met I've met Pete, who's an employee of yours, uh, yeah. many different times, dealt with him, sold cards to him. He's a very impressive young man. He's 19 years old. I mean, he, this guy is going to make a lot of money in any industry that he chooses to be in. He's actually one of the more impressive young people that I've met in this industry. So when I did yeah. hear that he had some some issues, it, it, it did concern me because I person I actually personally know him, personally dealt with him. He's young. Like he said, he's 19 very impressive individual so the fact that he got kicked out of the show and then decided to set up a table outside i'd give him i'd give him a little fist pound for that for i think that's a, that's a that's a pretty solid See, move uh, now what about uh, uh, unlike you guys who like to sell and get the hell out of there he wanted to stay <laughs> you guys are like who wants this table i'm like dude we haven't even opened the doors of the show yet you're like who wants this table i'll even leave the cases we want to go home no <laughs> Pete's just trying to stick you, around. Pete's a great guy. Do you know anything about this young man who was escorted yeah. out wearing a, wearing a t shirt of you? What what was the, what was the story about this? All right, so so I'm going to keep it as uh, PG as I can because he is a, a minor, right? He is 16 years old. Um, but this young man went to the show, and he was an attendee. His dad was with him. They came with other family members, and uh, they were pay you know they paid 25 dollars for parking they paid 15 or 20 bucks to come in each and uh they were immediately confronted and this young man was text i won't even say his name but um this young man texted me and was like through instagram he's like hey Amron, they're trying to kick me out i was like what's going on and he's like uh i don't know i didn't say anything but i'm wearing a shirt do you think that might be part of it and he's a customer. He doesn't work for us or anything like that. He's a customer. We give our shirts away because we love our, our customers. And there were multiple people wearing that shirt around the shop, around the, the show. And uh, they, the promoters or some somebody that worked for the promoters stepped up and were like, you're going to have to leave. And the dad steps in and goes, what's going on? And then he goes, either you leave or I'm going to call the security. This is what I'm told third party. I have no clue if that really happened or not, but I heard it directly from the dad and the son who came to my trade night after they didn't go to the official trade night. I don't know if they were allowed to, maybe he had to go bare chested uh, if he was going to end up going to that. But um, I got all this information directly from them and I was just shocked. I was just shocked that wearing a t-shirt from another rivals rival. I mean, what, what's competition if the person can't touch you. Right. So um, it's just, it's just sad and to treat people like that and to see people getting kicked out of a, a show we have a show in three weeks you guys are set up at it i don't care mm -hmm. what they wear i'm i'm happier here you know what i mean thanks for coming and supporting my show you didn't have to you didn't have to drive all the way to downtown sacramento as this example um <laughs> sports card nonsense that would love to hear their pg ver pg 13 version i was standing right next to mike giuseppe at the industry conference but i was too starstruck to talk to him or else i would have told him myself so uh but yeah it i just think that it's so petty uh but what's to be expected in this industry right we're full there's it's a bunch of petty people a lot of awesome people but you wouldn't have half the fun that you guys do to report if you didn't have petty people oh. right that, I mean, that, that's that's the truth right there you guys could do stuff that I can't do on the radio. Everybody knows I have a radio show on Saturday mornings on 1140. Only radio show in the nation about sports cards and, and memorabilia. Right. Ryan's been on the show multiple times. Um, so, yeah. So we want to, we want to, you guys can do what I can't do, which is speak seriously openly. And, um, and I'm just trying to be a good guy right now uh, by not outing this stuff. Cause I could really just cook somebody right now, but I'm choosing not to. I'll let the chat cook them. We pro I'm, I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk about speaking and not the last time we talk about something. You, you teased this. You said you went to Jeff Wilson's I shop. I did. What the heck happened over there? So I went over there. It's about a $35 lift ride from 
the, the, we had the Tops Industry Conference at the College Football Hall of Fame. Really awesome venue. The whole place was, I mean, they spent the money to make that thing awesome. Not only the venue, but also what Fanatics put into the finances to make this work. We walked away with incredible gifts. By the way, quick mention, they gave us three slab packs of just thanks for coming. We appreciate you. In addition to two meet and greets, one meet and greet was with Thurman Thomas. So you got an autograph card with Thurman Thomas and a photo op. And then Andrew Jones was the other one. So they had both guys there personally. Michael Rubin was walking around and talking to everybody. He was very, very awesome. And then they gave us three packs, these uh, silver packs. And the silver packs had three encased cards. So I'm ripping them open. I'm thinking I'm going to get some lame-ass industry conference card. The first one I open, it's a red number to 10 uh, autograph Alex Rodriguez card in a cosmic there we format. Go. Then the second one I open, it's a red number to 10 Evan Carter autograph card. And you know, one of the hot rookies uh, mm -hmm. this year for the Rangers. And then the third pack was a Tatis auto number two, 25. Every single card that was given out was an autographed encased card. And, and they gave out a thousand or so, three per person. And you figure there were 700 attendees. They, it was like 2000 cards that are gonna be floating around. But, and they were very particular, like you had to show them your badge to get your little booth. They fed us. They, it was top notch. And I would tell you that if anybody's thinking about going, man, I sound like a shill. They don't pay me anything, but you got to get on board. They're going to put this thing on in New York three weeks after the national. Like you're a fool for not going. They, they're doing everything top notch. And we always complain about the, how the national is and how it's stinky and the bathrooms smell like shit. And mm -hmm. I mean, bathroom shit smell like shit, but somehow at the national it smells like extra shit, right? Because nobody's using exactly. deodorant or cleanliness or no. exactly uh, everybody everybody with bad breath has a secret for you like you know stuff like that. But this this was top notch. The the place was top notch. So they're doing an event in New York, like a fan fest that's happening the mm -hmm. third week after the national, and then they're doing a, a big card show in Florida uh, that November one, two, and three. Huge card show, nine hundred tables. I think that they're going to start rivaling uh, the national level and yep. there's no doubt about it. And when you have people like Tom Brady showing up to the event, dude, yep. they're trying to make it like the Coachella. They even said it. We're trying to make it like the Coachella of sports cards. Wow. So it was, it was pretty awesome. Okay. Jeff Wilson. So I take the $35 card ride to cards HQ and it's massive. It's, it's in a shopping center. It's like, a, a, it's one of the anchor, tenants there's a grocery store nearby it so i walk in and there it's so cement floors cases everywhere i'm in i'm overwhelmed they play music throughout it's a pretty cool setup i was actually shocked at the lack of cards that you could actually touch they had some value boxes there but mm -hmm. i think they had probably less than 15 total value boxes for you to thumb through everything else was behind a case and that means wax boxes single cards um you could touch supplies but nothing more than that really um they probably had i don't know maybe they had four people working that day remember i'm coming in on a monday at five they close at seven so i walk in i'm taking pictures i'm kind of hanging out i see one of the guys in their breaker cabana and they're doing that and uh so i'm five minutes in don't get greeted 10 minutes in Dunker greeting. I'm texting my team. I go, you guys better greet everybody that walks in the door. And, and we do. We do. I'm not worried about that. 20 minutes go by. I literally post up with my laptop on one of the tables. I'm typing. I'm working on something else. I'm looking around. Nobody comes over to tell me what's up or can I help you or who the hell wow. are you or what are you doing here? Nothing. I'm there, guys. No joke. 45 minutes before I'm like, well, I'm out of here. I leave. The guy behind the counter, have a great day. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, that's it. Uh, I probably saw 20 to 25 people total come in through the hour and an hour or so that I was there. Uh, small sales. A guy, kid was ripping a box. Um, it was, a, again, it was a Monday at five o'clock. I know we have Mondays at five o'clock that look like that, but my overhead certainly isn't anywhere near that. And on top of that, it wasn't like there was a show going on to compete. So if we had a show in Sacramento, 
I don't expect our store traffic to be strong, but this is the industry summit. These are a bunch of other car dealer, excuse me, car, hobby shop owners and breakers there. So they're not regular uh, customer traffic anyways. So I was shocked at the lack of um, foot traffic in, but I just felt like, mm. I just felt surprised that when you're that early in the system of, of being a card shop owner, that you aren't overwhelming your customer base with, wow. I mean, they don't even know, they don't know who I am. I could be a big whale, which I'm not, or a guy that has a few bucks, which I do. But I was ready to spend if somebody's willing to talk to me. But there's just something about not being able to speak to anybody that really kind of turns you off as a customer. And as a consumer, you know, it's all about making sure that you, um, that you pay attention and make people feel good. I mean, people don't, if they wanted to buy wax or cards, they could just do it online. But they go to a shop to be able to feel like they're connecting with other people. That's why we go to concerts. That's why we go to card shows because we want to be around other people that are like-minded that want to do what we do, which is collect. And we just didn't feel it. I just didn't feel it. I was actually shocked. And their idea of the cases that stand straight up with the slabs behind it, it's, it's a good idea until you get to cards that are below your knees. And then you're like, dude, I don't, I'm not going to try to crawl down there and look and see what's on the ground. So you might as well just put the worst cards at the bottom because nobody's going to go to look down at that level. It's just a unique situation. And I don't know, they're early on. We certainly weren't great when we were in our first couple months and we're still trying to build, but not, not greeting doesn't cost any money. I mean, saying hi doesn't cost anything. If you have to be trained to say hello, do they have an aisle of just Will Greer? Uh, it was marked, but it was sold out. Most of it was sold out is what they, uh, I'm talking to the chat right now. So Ben and Jerry's Jeff Wilson card shop model. Your chat is hilarious. That they all scare me, because because when when the chat goes, man, they roast. But uh, scare me God, too. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. So, anything else I can answer for you guys? I'm I'm here that, for you. That's absolutely incredible. I think that that cards HQ thing is going to end up on our our clips channel. Why don't you promote yourself? You've 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 you filled us in on the Tops Industry Summit. You gave us yeah. some gossip about the Sacramento Card Show that happened yeah. uh, this past weekend. You you gave us. A tremendous clip about Jeff Wilson. You host a, sh a radio show at 10 a.m. Yeah. Pacific every Saturday. I've been on it twice. Absolutely phenomenal go getting to go into the 1140 a.m. studio, a, 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 a radio station I used to listen to in yeah. my 1968 Camaro that only had a radio. And I would listen to this when the Kings, Sacramento Kings Lakers rivalry were at its, at its peak. And as a Laker fan, I would often listen to uh, kind of hate listen to that show. But you have well, a show. Let me, let me get. Let, let me guess. Bibby fouled him with his nose, right on the elbow. Oh, that was a Bibby. Look, that was a Bibby foul, right? I, I I shouldn't even call it a rivalry because actually Sacramento never actually beat the Lakers. <laughs> <never won anything. laughs> you know what? But I wish Pimp I could say something, but I can't. Can't. Yeah. Well, these days the Kings are a little better uh, than the Lakers. At least uh, more enjoyable to watch. Who pimp your pimp your sh pimp your store pimp your radio uh, show pimp your card show yeah. that's coming up that we will be at sports card radio is the uh promo code if you want to get five dollars off a three-day pass and also get a, an autograph of john taylor but pimp this for me you can do a better about yeah. job pimping yourself than i can card shop is uh true sports cards we're located in rockland across from the busiest costco in the united states which is off the 65 Ooh. that's legit and i'm not joking it's the biggest busiest costco in the united states so we're across the street from that uh we have 1800 square feet of floor space on the at, over there and then I opened a shop mile and a half away at the Roosevelt Galleria. So we have two sports cards in the mall as well at the Galleria. So we have two locations a mile and a half away from each other. Uh, wax at both. Mem really over at the mall and uh, more cards at the store. The show is called the Sacramento Autograph Expo. This is our third one that we're doing. Um, we've done one at the Rockland Event Center in November of 22. Mm -hmm. We did one last May of 20. Of 23 you guys were part of that mm -hmm. um i think that might have been a record for you guys at a show i believe you were there for the entire day <laughs> you're laughing but i'm not i was like this guy, this guy's a and, and 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 it's just like it's like you run out of there and colin's hat just kind of just spinning in the air like when when the cartoon runs out of there and shit the, the like, clothes are like still road there. runner like Bew! 
and what the cases are still there. Yeah. So, um, so we're doing the Sacramento sport. There it is. There it is. I saw it. He said that this guy likes to fondle pictures of men. Incorrect. I fondled WNBA cards. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. Wow. laughs> they don't want me fondling their cards, but I'd still do it anyways. Um, so we have a, a sick lineup. On Friday, I just added Kevin Mitchell. He's our only autograph guest to, uh, to the show on Friday. I kept it nice and cheap, $20 to go ahead and meet him. Uh, you can meet Kevin Mitchell, the NL MVP for the Giants on Friday. Then Saturday is our big day. We have, we'll have like 90 tables, about 55 dealers there, all kinds of cards and memorabilia available. But we'll have Dennis Rodman, Malik Monk. This is a first appearance for Malik Monk publicly since he's talked about going in free agency. So this is something that a lot of people are going to show up to and try to say, please stay, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, we have Johnny Manziel. We got all the bad boys. Ricky Henderson. Oh, my Randy God. Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson. Oh, the that's big a good hurt one. Frank Thomas. Yeah, Randy Johnson's expensive, too. Uh, Vlad Guerrero <laughs> Sr. Um, you know, we've got some real big, big hitters on, at this show. And, um, like, I, I actually asked uh, if Big Hurt's uh, agent, I asked him if it's cool if we have some new Gen X inscriptions like she'll love it too he's like he didn't say no like fuck, this is perfect we're gonna bring some eugenics bottles wow. out there see Ooh. if we can sign a couple of those i think that, is, that might be a come up right there yeah and then on on saturday night we'll have a trade night hosted by candlestick sports big brother cards and stone chase the bag so good guys friends yep. of the shop uh, mm -hmm. anthony works for us big brother works for us so we'll have a trade night there. We'll have more than eight people there, unlike another recent card shows trade night. And then, um, oh, yeah, yeah, crickets, baby. And then, um, <laughs> how do you order one pizza and still have leftovers at your trade night? <laughs> hey, man, take this home. <laughs> Four slices. That's it. Uh, and then on Sunday we have Tom Rathman. John Taylor, and we have Michael Cooper, his first autograph session that he's done publicly since he uh, got accepted into the Hall of Fame. So nice. also with a three-day pass, John Taylor's autograph is absolutely free. So I can't think of oh. anything better. And by the way, for those of you that asked, yes, Jason Williams was supposed to be part of our show. Somebody else snagged him, kind of took him over from us and uh, I hope I hope Jason enjoyed his twelve people that he signed autographs for. I'm going at it, guys. Fuck it, let's go. We're uh, we're we're, we're letting you go, 12, baby. Twelve public, twelve public, twelve twelve tickets. I talked to that's hard to do. That, that, that's hard to do in he, Sacramento. I mean, he's a legend in Sacramento. Yeah, I mean that's purposely terrible. Like you have to be bad. To, to put that thing together. So I feel bad because we had Jason at our shop and we had over 200 people come to come to that last July. And um, the rumor was Jason said after the signing, he's like, hey, is, what time is Emron's trade night? Maybe we'll go over there, which we did have that night. He had a flight at 6.15, but our trade night started at 6. So sorry, Jay. Will. maybe next time. Maybe yeah. next time. Emron, you have been a great sport. You got to go over to the poker table and sit for 12 hours. They probably, took, they probably took my money by now. No, no. They ain't taking your money. You're going to get all the money. <laughs> but, yeah, here's the uh, other, one more thing yeah. I saw in there. It said uh, it said you had to pay uh, Mojo 200 bucks not to show up. No, don't worry, man. Mojo don't show up to his hometown stuff. He's busy in Canada. He's busy in Atlanta. He's busy on all – I mean – Mojo and I are cool, but the guy doesn't show up for his hometown shows, and that's okay, but he's a road warrior. He wants to make sure that he gets that content, and, you know, I'm not into drama. I'm into content. There you go. We're, and, hey, um, we show up to our hometown hey, events. We'll be there you may, not, may 17th you may through stay, the 19th. I, and I can't wait to see you guys because you guys will be there longer than Jason Williams was there for sure, but not by much. <laughs> Probably not by much. That's true. <laughs> Guys, I'll keep yep. reading the chat. 
I'll let them uh, kill me in there. But hopefully we see all of you guys at the show. Don't forget to use their promo code. because uh, Sports Card Radio. Uh, yeah, Sports Card Radio, because these guys are some of the best. And it's so funny, because when I was at the Industry Summit, you guys were a topic. For guys that don't travel to these oh. things, they sure do chat about you a lot. So keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're, you're breaking eggs out there and, and making waves and making people feel uncomfortable because you're calling them out on their bullshit. So keep it going. And uh, we need more of you and less of a uh... – I'll leave it at that. I hear that. And All right, Ron, guys. It, you got it. It was great seeing you again, buddy. Let's yeah, talk yeah. soon. We'll see you soon. All right, bro. See you soon. Thank you. That was Imran, the owner of True Sports Cards up in Rockland, California. I've appeared on his radio show, the True Sports Card Show, Sacktown Sports, 1140 AM.